Hey YouTube, it's the test lead, and today's video is the testing pyramid. Software should be tested in its full capacity before being released to an end user. An unpleasant end user experience can destroy an application and stop a user from using an application altogether. To get the best level of test coverage, different levels of testing should be performed. It is usually impossible to catch every single bug before being released to production, but a tester's job is to limit these amount of bugs. The different layers of testing include unit testing, integration testing, and system testing. This video will cover the structure of the testing pyramid, the effectiveness, as well as who creates the test for each part of the testing pyramid. First, the structure. The lower on the pyramid the tests are, the cheaper and easier they are to create and run. For example, a unit test should test just a simple method or function, whereas a system slash end-to-end -end test has to create a user, log in, go through a whole flow, and then sign out. Think about it, testing just a method or function, going through a full user flow. Two different costs, not only to create, but also to run. And because of this, as you go up our testing pyramid, the test also becomes slower. Remember, at the bottom unit test, just test the method, a couple milliseconds. As we go up, maybe you had to log in, it's two or three seconds. You had to go through a whole flow, it's another four or five seconds. Check a database after, another two seconds. So all those seconds add up. So as you go up the testing pyramid, slower test. The split for our integration unit and system test can be roughly 70, 20, 10. Where 70 is the unit test, 20 is the integration test, and 10 is the system slash end to end test. So for every 70 unit tests you write, you can also aim to have 20 integration tests and 10 system slash end to end tests. These numbers are not concrete, just a guide to aim for. Unit tests should be created first because they test all the methods and functions. After that, we go to our integration test. So we make sure our unit tests are all functioning properly. Then once we're sure that the integration tests work properly, we can do our full system and end-to-end -end testing. Now, who creates the test for each different level? There's no concrete right or wrong answer for this. These are the suggested people who should be creating the test. Unit tests should be created by the developer themselves. The person who developed the code and application should also be writing a unit test for many reasons. The developer is the person most familiar with all the different methods and functions that were implemented, so it'll be more efficient to let them write the unit test for it also. Integration tests kind of fit into the same boat. They also can be done by the developer because they're most familiar with everything, but could also be done by an independent tester. Now system and end-to-end -end tests should not be done by a developer. There should be an independent tester, QA, automation engineer that does the system and end-to-end -end testing. The end-to-end -end test will be the most used and most trusted. Normally companies every night have a nightly suite of system tests that they run to see to make sure that the application is performing properly. This is why these tests should be created and executed by a neutral party or tester. And finally, the effectiveness. When executed properly, the testing pyramid can be very beneficial for test coverage. All the individual parts of the new code are covered, as well as how those parts are interacting with each other. More importantly, make sure the new features and functionality didn't break old features and functionality through regression tests. This should be part of your system testing suite. You should have a list of regression tests that run every time a new feature or application is made. It is also important that you know that the further you move the testing pyramid, the more brittle the tests become, and also the harder it is to find the actual bug or defect in the code. For example, a unit test, as I said for the hundredth time, just tests one simple method or function, whereas a system test has a whole user flow. So the single method of functionality you can pinpoint where the bug is. Whereas for the whole user flow, there may be 20 different units working together to attain the whole flow. So when that test failed, you have to actually debug and see where is the actual problem at in the code. Whereas the unit test is one method being tested. If it fails, that method is the problem. This is why you should practice having very descriptive assert messages. So if something fails, you should assert what the test was supposed to do and write a message to the console or the log or to the application saying, what the problem is. I know what you're thinking next. Why not just unit test everything? They're faster, easier to write, less costly, simple. Do you personally ever use the application on your phone just for one simple feature? For example, on your mobile banking app, do you ever just use the feature to add a payment? Well, that whole payment flow is a flow. A unit test for that payment flow might just be adding the numbers to the text box of your payment. 
you're not just using it for that feature, you're using it for the full flow. That's why we need system end-to-end -to -end testing. This is also why it's important for companies to have nightly suites that run for the end-to-end -end tests to make sure that the health of the application is as expected. If you found this video helpful at all, please like, share, and subscribe. If you want another video just like this, please click here. And hey, don't forget to learn something new today.